more last two more home games anyway. I'll play you back two down. I'll let you back. Perfect. Sounds good. No, Alex. You're welcome anytime. Good to play, Alex. Oh yeah, yeah. I sent him that credit for it. So yeah, I have a couple of problems as well. If you watch this game, I'm gonna call you soon. Yeah. Four plus years. January fifteenth, nineteen ninety nine was my first day. <laughs> yeah, I've been here a long time. You're the rare one that stays at the same. I think Andy and well, Wallington Andy and are both longer than me. Maybe they do. Once you move here, why do you want to go anywhere else? I know. I love it. I do too. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We're going to start with a couple of announcements uh, for our local affiliates. Today's satellite coordinates are at Galaxy 17, Transponder 14, Slot B, the downlink 11975.5 vertical. And if you have any questions, please see the folks at Hammond Communications. They'll be happy to help you out. A few announcements for the media in the room, as well as those who are listening to us on the Zoom. As a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation when you're asking a question. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will take questions in the interview room before the Zoom. And there's no recording allowed on your cell phones or cameras of these press conferences. We'll be joined first by Arkansas head coach Eric Musselman and the student athletes will follow approximately 15 minutes after we start with coach. Thank you.
doing very well. Hello, everyone. We're joined now by Arkansas head coach Eric Musselman. Coach, welcome to Las Vegas. A uh, couple of comments about your arrival here, practice, and what you expect for the weekend. Uh, first of all, we're really happy to be here. Um, guys have played well through, through two games. I think they're excited uh, to play an excellent UConn team. And, uh, you know, we had a good practice uh, yesterday, a good practice today. Guys are in good spirits and uh, looking forward to, to competing uh, tomorrow. Okay, we'll take questions from media in the room. Please raise your hand. We'll have a microphone to you. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Eric, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Is that how you're doing? Got kind of a multi-layered question on, uh, on, on Nick. Um, he obviously has had some rough shooting games of late. How do you think he's doing, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally? What, what, what do you expect from him tomorrow? And how important is it for you guys to get him going offensively? Yeah, I mean, Nick's one of the most talented players in the country. And, and uh, he's had some big games for us. And uh, he's, in a, he's been in a tough situation in and out of the lineup with injuries. And um, it's not easy for, for any player to do, let alone when, when a team's, you know, on a tournament run. Um, but yeah, we'd certainly love Nick to have a big game and, um, but it's like I said, I mean, he's, he's been in and out of the lineup. It's, it's hard to do for any, for any player, uh, let alone someone, you know, that's in their freshman year. How do you think he's doing emotionally? I mean, he's been, he's been great in practice. He was bouncing around the last two days and, um, I think he's excited to, to get another opportunity to play just as we all are. Okay, right here in the middle. Uh, Coach Kyle Kensing, this is on behalf of the San Diego Union Tribune. Um, yeah, I was actually going to ask, I read the story about your father wanting to, at one point to manage the Padres and you going to games growing up as a kid. Was there anything about spending that time with your father that you've managed to incorporate into your coaching? Uh, and, and what did throwing out the first pitch at the Pods game this year uh, mean to you? Throwing out the first pitch at the Padre game is, you know, one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me because um, – I have the MLB package and watch every Padre game, which that's a long baseball season. And there's a time difference. My wife is not happy that, that I love the Padre so much. But um, I mean, for my dad, just, I mean, too much to remember. Um, in San Diego, one of the first things that happened when we moved there is, is he met with Paul Brown, um, who's a former Cleveland Brown, Cincinnati Bengals coach, owner um, and I remember them sitting at the dinner table talking for what seemed like to me a couple hours and they were talking about the first meeting my dad was going to have with the San Diego sales which was an ABA team because my dad had been a college coach his whole life and the importance of how an NBA player slash NFL player their antennas are up on everything you said and just the preparation that was needed for every meeting um, so those are some of my early memories. Okay, yeah, Eric uh, Dama Mori from the Hartford Current. Uh, how do you uh, kind of analyze or size up Jordan Hawkins, particularly his shooting mechanics? What do you see when you've watched him on film? Yeah, one of the one of the best pure shooters in college basketball. He's got a quick release. He's got a confident release. Um, doesn't need doesn't need bunch of dribbles. Um, can catch and shoot. Can also create a little off his off the balance you can't give him sep you know you get, can't get let him have separation you've got to ID him as early as possible um, you know and try to not not to let him get any catch and and and, and shoot right away shots um, coach Hurley does a great job of running multiple things for him off baseline out of bound triple screens and uh, staggered wheel action stuff where any and the thing is he does a great job of constantly moving He's not a, a guy that's stationary. When the ball moves, he moves. Um, so he's a difficult cover because of all those reasons. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Eric, how, how important has the, the transfer portal been for you uh, building your roster over the past few years? It seems like you've done a very good job with that. And then you kind of juxtapose that against UConn, which certainly uses the portal, but maybe not as much as a lot of other programs. Well, I promise I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for the transfer portal. Um, I mean, we, we, I kind of felt like 
um, at Nevada. We were at the forefront of the transfer portal. Really interesting because eight years ago, uh, when somebody was transferring, the process was a lot different. You had to go through your compliance office, and there was a lot of paperwork involved. And I can promise you there was not much competition. The competition now for, for transfers is, is as fierce as any recruiting landscape that you could be a part of. But it was not that way for three years, that, especially because guys had to sit out. Um, I, I, I know that for a fact that I would never have been the coach at Arkansas if it wasn't for, for transfers and guys like Cody and Caleb Martin and Kendall Stevens and guys that had transferred from Power 5 schools to, to the Mountain West. Um, and certainly UConn's done a, done a really good job of uh, being selective in who they take out of the transfer portal and having guys that, that, that they do get out of the portal that are integral parts of, of their roster management. Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Eric, at what point in your life did you become comfortable with taking your shirt off in public? And, <laughs> and do you feel like, you know, this is now part of your signature that, you know, you're almost expected to... To, to do something crazy when you win a big game? I'm going to go back to, like, when you live in San Diego, like, a lot of times you don't have your shirt on, especially if you grow up in Bird Rock or La Jolla and, and you're riding the boardwalk. Um, but in all seriousness, it happened at Nevada. I don't know how or why. Um, I was not planning on doing it the other night, um, but one of our hosts... Um, was kind of begging me even after the first game. He was one of the guys that walked us around. And so, I, I mean, I guess my emotions got the best of me. My wife's not always happy with that. But, I mean, it's not something that, that we plan on doing all the time. It just kind of, you know, emotions run through you. And um, I guess you get a certain age and, you know, you just kind of do it just because. <laughs> right, right in front. Uh, hey Eric, Bob Holt again, Arkansas Democrat. Is that I think in uh, Des Moines you guys were were a plus eight for those two games, uh, uh, average. You know, I think you're plus sixteen versus uh, Illinois and Kansas, and then uh, uh, UConn's like a plus nine three on the season. I think they're the top rebounding team margin wise left in the tournament. How do you see the the rebounding matchup between between y'all and uh, UConn? I mean they're they're uh, they're relentless on the glass for sure. Uh, you know, I, I think that our teams had nights where we're really, really good defensive rebounding because that's obviously the, you know, the key is to try to keep them off the offensive glass. That's one of the defensive themes that we're trying to create with our team. Um, so you've got to be physical. They're a physical team. They send four to the glass almost every time. You know, a lot of teams will send three to the glass and two back. Um, but they, almost every possession, they're sending four to the glass. So... Um, we've got to do a good job defensive rebounding, and, and then we'll see how that affects our transition offense um, as well. Um, but they're obviously they're the best rebounding team we've played all year, and we played against some really good rebounding teams. Texas A&M's phenomenal rebounding team. Kentucky with Toshiba is a great rebounding team. Auburn can rebound the basketball. Um, but this is, you know, the numbers say that, that UConn is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. And... They have two centers that, in my opinion, is the best center combination in all of college basketball. They basically have a, a backup that's, that's a starter on almost every team in the country, and he's a freshman and had a great year. Hey, Coach, uh, Joe Ruta with the Hartford Current. Um, you guys obviously got off to a great start, you know, the game against Creighton, um, and then you get into an SEC schedule is difficult. Can you reflect on the way that this season, the way that your team has transformed over the season and the things that they've dealt with, you know, in terms of injuries and things like that? Yeah, I mean, one of, one of college basketball's most talented players, uh, Trevin Brazil, is, is out with a, with a knee injury. And uh, I truly think he was one of the most versatile players in all of college basketball. We kind of built our team around him. And, and then obviously with Nick Smith being in and out of the lineup, we, this team has dealt with a lot. Um, but we were fairly healthy the two prior years, and it was the same kind of theme where maybe we didn't start SEC play really, you know, like we would have liked to have, um, but we just kept kind of grinding and, and looking at the next game on our schedule and, 
and trying to have belief. Um, and here we are again. But it's a, it's a resilient team that's, that's, that's overcome a lot for sure. Um, but the, I do think the SEC schedule, you know, it's, it's hard. I think it's, in my opinion, it's the best college basketball and college football and college baseball and gymnastics and softball. Um, but certainly in, in basketball, it's uh, probably underrated a little bit. Right here in the center. Coach Kyle Kansen again. Um, this one's on the European tour that you took this summer. With having such a new roster, how beneficial was that? And how much were you able to kind of look back during the season and kind of point the moments from that tour that you're able to kind of build off of? I thought it was really beneficial when we, when we started the year because we got out, you know, to a great start. Uh, but then the, then the injuries kind of hit. Um, but I, I, I think any time you can take those uh, foreign tours that, that if, you, if you do them right, they can really build chemistry, they can build bonding. You, you know, the players get to see the coaching staff in a different light. Um, so I do think that buy-in and trust, you can, you can kind of get a, a head start if it's handled correctly. Um, so, I, I, you know, I don't think there's any doubt that that, that time, especially with so many transfers, you know, and, and not just the transfers, but, but out, of our, out of our 12 players that will suit up, um, tomorrow, six of them are freshmen. So, so it's the freshmen along with the transfers, it, it did give us a, a little bit of a head start on, on bonding for sure. Okay, back in the back. John Marshall, AP. Uh, getting back to your father, what would you say is maybe the greatest lesson you learned from him in all the years of practices and games and all that? A lot, John, but um, competing. Like everything that happened in our household was competition. Um, the the uh, pickup games growing up at La Jolla Rec were legendary with my dad, you know, just because, uh, I mean, if we lost the pickup game and had a, an hour and a half wait on Saturday or Sunday morning, it was, he wasn't real pleasant to be around. Uh, but everything that, that happened, in, you know, with my dad, and I, whenever I was around him, it, the, the comp, being a competitor was kind of beyond belief. Um, but you know, he wrote on my on my uh, lunch bag, my brown paper lunch sack bag that I would take to effort, energy, enthusiasm. He wrote that every day when he was home and not out recruiting or not on a road trip. So that's what I went to school with, and. Um, you know, to be able to work with him with the Timberwolves and watch his preparation, watch how he conducted practice, his attention to detail. Um, I was lucky to, to watch him meet with so many other coaches in different sports. He was really good friends with Billy Martin, the former Yankee manager, and I was exposed to a lot of stuff that a normal, you know, kid wouldn't be exposed to going on road trips when he was an NBA coach, being a ball boy and working the opposing team's locker room when he was a Cavs coach and rebounding for people like Larry Bird. I mean, that's just, I just was exposed to a whole different lifestyle than, than you know, everybody else that I grew up with. Adam? Coach, uh, Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. Well, when you came in from Reno, how, why do you think you were so uh, quickly able to put your mark on this program? And what do you want the image of your program to be from the outside? I mean, I guess from an image standpoint, I wanted, you know, to be a program that people think wins. Um, I hope that, that our offensive style of play is one that if a player watches, he would want to play in. If you're a fan, you would want to watch, although this year we're a little bit, we go through some scoring droughts and maybe not offensively um, as pleasing as maybe some other teams, um, but we do play with pretty good pace. What was the other part of the question? Why were you so, able, so quickly able to kind of put your, your mark on this program? I mean, I just think, you know, like any program, you know, you go in with a plan, a short-term plan and a long-term plan, and then you try to think about how you can have sustainability in today's college landscape, whether it's a, a football program or a uh, women's basketball pro you can you can build quickly because of the portal and you're seeing first time coaches do that this year that have had great success through the portal and um, 
But then the key is, you know, how can you have sustainability? Um, you got you to have, like I said, a short-term plan and a long-term plan. And although obviously the most important thing right now is to get ready for UConn, I, I would be lying to say that we're not also recruiting today and didn't recruit last night and didn't recruit this morning and won't recruit tonight because, I mean, I don't know why it, it is what it is, but the portal's open while teams are still playing. So, you know, you got to worry about two things. Um, obviously, the most important thing is UConn, but there is still recruiting going on right now as well. Coach, thank you, and good luck tomorrow. Thanks. We'll be joined by Arkansas student athletes Devontae Davis and Kamari Johnson. Okay, we're joined in the interview room by Arkansas student athletes Devontae Davis and Kamani Johnson. Uh, if you have a question for Devontae or Kamani, just raise your hand. We'll bring you a microphone. Uh, Adam. Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. For Devontae, just what is it like playing for Coach Musselman, and uh, how would you describe him to somebody who hasn't met him? It's fun playing for him, but um, his intensity um, throughout the entire day. It could change, but most of the time it's high, but 
my intensity of, of life and like expectations and things like that is high as well. And so um, it's fun. Uh, and if you haven't met him, you'd probably be scared. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you don't know how he gonna come at you, and so you never know. You know, he come at you like this, so he, you never know. So, um, but it's fun and um, it's exciting. Um, this journey has been really exciting with him, you know, and I'm glad I got to experience it with him. Uh, follow up there. Oh yeah, I mean, Must is just intense. You know, he's crazy. If you haven't met him, he's what you see on TV. That's him for sure. Mm -hmm. Like shirt off, jumping around. He liked that at 8 in the morning when he on the treadmill. So that's, that's just must, you know what I mean? High energy. But, I man, I can't say enough about the journey I've been on with him since I've uh, played for him. It's been really, really fun. Other questions for the student athletes? Oh, Mark. Uh, Mark Anderson, AP. Uh, for either player, um, having Nick Smith back, how valuable is that? And obviously his minutes went down in this uh, tournament so far. Have you, any words of encouragement for him as far as sort of you get provided to him? I mean, it's always good when you can, you know, have a top 10 draft pick come back and be on your team. And I mean, you know, he's been dealing with injuries this year, but I mean, he's, he's, uh, we know who he is as a player. He knows who he is as a player. That's kind of all the encouragement. We, we don't really got to give him too much encouragement. He's a, he's a dog. We know he's a dog. We know what he can do. And uh, we're just excited to have him back. And, uh, you know, it's a new city. Close the chapter on the old one. And I can't wait to see what he does when he performs tomorrow. Follow up from Mark. Yeah, De Devontae, you saw these emotions in the locker room after the last game. What, just, what, what was it like seeing a, a, that, where the players gone through so much this season and see that come out of them? Yeah, um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but me and Nick has been knowing each other because we we're from the same place since, um, since we've been playing at the Boys and Girls Club, and that's about six and seven. And so what he went through, like I know myself, cause I we all went through something before, and and he's human, and we always comfort comforted him, and and we know how it feel to 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 be in the position he's in, and have all the pressure that um, everybody's putting on him, and for him to come back, um, that's that's amazing, and, and he's a young man that a lot of people can't phase, and and it, and it's tough to be in this world today, and be able to take on the things he's take on, and I'm glad he's able to take on them. The way he the way he is, and and I really appreciate that, and I know that other guys do as well. And so, for him to be able to cry in that locker room and feel those feel those emotions, you know, and even even after not having the best game, and being there for us, and we being there for him, and we being there for each other, it's amazing. And, and he know I love him, man. He'll be fine. And, and like Kamani said, it's a new city. We in Vegas, and he told me earlier today he he felt good, and so we ready. Yeah. <laughs> Over here to the left. Hey, guys. Paul Gutierrez from uh, ESPN. For both of you, how, given the history of the program, how important is it to know the heritage, uh, the 40 minutes of hell, the national championship, everything that came with the program before to adapt to today's game? I think I would say um, coming in my first year, hearing things like that, it's like, should we have pressure on ourselves? Like, you know, coming into, like, postseason, like, you know, it's a lot of, they can win it, you know, like, do they have the chance? And so it's like, we think about it, but like, we try to put it to the side because I mean, that's the past, you know, and, and we want to think about it now. And, and so coming into this year, uh, it wasn't no intention of looking at that, but we do, we do see it and think about it and stuff like that, but we don't put it on our shoulders because this is an entire new team, entire new staff, like new, whole new decade, you know, so it's like, we, we focus now, and I think that is amazing, you know, just to have that history. Um, of course, we want to try to do it again, and so um, try to focus on this year, you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the history of our program, you know, in that championship, and uh, I just talk, been talking to some of the guys from that team and, you know, what it means to them and what it, like, just being an alumni from our program, like everybody's tuned in, giving us encouragement. But, you know, just like Vo said, you know, uh, we, we, we know the opportunity we have in front of us, but, you know, we just got to take it one game at a time, and we're, we're focused on UConn and, and, you know, winning that game. But uh, we're definitely aware of what we have in front of us, but, you know, we, we kind of got tunnel vision right now. In the back, please. Wayne Norman, UConn Sports Network. Come on, you, 
you lost four of your last five before the NCAA, and now you've won two straight, including knocking off the top seed. What has changed in those two games from the prior five? Uh, I mean, my mom always told me, you're only as good as your last game. So, you know, I, I have short-term memory loss when it comes to losing games or winning games. And, you know, you always got to put on your, your best performance when you step on the court. So every, every new game is a new 40 minutes to uh, grow and be better. And I think um, that's kind of been the difference, just not holding your head on the pass. And, you know, especially in March, because every, like, every game could be your last game. So I think our team has done a good job of just preparing and, and treating every game like it's our championship game. Any other questions? Uh, Adam's got one more up front here. Uh, come on, just going back, you talked about uh, Musk taking the shirt off. What do you guys think when you see him do that and just kind of run around crazy? Uh, I always say a happy Musk is a happy us. So. <laughs> <laughs> more shirt off is good for us. <laughs> okay, nothing else. Thank you. Devante Kamani, good luck to you guys tomorrow. Appreciate, you, appreciate it.
have a quick announcement for our broadcast media today. Satellite coordinates are at Galaxy 17, Transponder 14, Slot B, Downlink 11975.5, Vertical. Please see the folks at Hammond Communications Group if you have any questions. For the media in attendance and on Zoom, as a courtesy to fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation when you're asking a question. If you're joining by Zoom, please use the raised hand function. We'll take a few questions from inside the interview room before we go to the Zoom. And recording the press conferences on your cell phones or on a camera is prohibited. We will be joined by five student athletes from UConn. Those five are Andre Jackson, Alex Caravan, Adama Sanogo, Jordan Hawkins, and Tristan Newton. We'll be starting shortly. Okay, we're going to get started. Andre is on his way. If you have a question for our student athletes, please raise your hand. We will bring a microphone to you in the back. Yeah, this is Kevin Sweeney from Sports Illustrated. Question for both Jordan and Tristan. I think you guys are often most dangerous when you guys can kind of push in semi-transition and hunt threes. I'm curious for you two guys as guards and Tristan often the, the distributor, Jordan often the shooter. Um, what makes you guys so dangerous in those settings? Well, I would say just pretty much having a great shooting around me, have AK, Jordan, they can shoot, and then the rim thrust that we have, Andre, catch any lob I, I throw in. 
obviously a dominant. He can score from wherever. So it's pretty much all credit to them. I have the easy job just giving them the ball. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Come front. Jordan, uh, how did you learn your shooting mechanics, and who was the dominant influence in teaching you how to shoot? Uh, my pops. Um, he taught me how to shoot. Um, so yeah, all credit to him for my jump shot. Um, I mean, I've been doing it for so long. I don't even, it's just like second nature to me. So uh, I just know when the ball's going to go in and when it's not. So I know what to do when I'm doing it wrong and when I'm doing it right, I'm going to keep doing it. So Right here down front. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, this is for Alex and Adama. I think you guys are the top rebounding team left in the country margin-wise. Uh, you're number three anyway. I think you're the top offensive rebound team. Arkansas was a plus 16 if you combine Illinois and Kansas games. How, well, number one, what makes you guys such good rebounders? And what do you see, see about the matchup inside versus Arkansas? Yeah, um, Arkansas, they're a very tough rebounding team, as you said. So um, we know it's going to be a battle on the boards tomorrow. And um, I think we get it from Coach Hurley instilling it every day in practice. He wants us to be the toughest team every time. Uh, stick to our identity, which is toughness and rebounding. So, um, you know, I think that just happens every day in practice, and we've just been getting better at it throughout the season. And that's the same way with Arkansas, too. i uh, got a follow-up question. And well, then, if, if Adama could answer that, yeah, too, please. Yeah, like I like to say, you know, like, um, you know, I can say the, the good offensive one. So, uh, you know, it's going to be like, it's going to be a fight on an uh, offensive one because we know they're going to go for it. And uh, uh, we work on offensive one every day in practice. So Coach Shelley, that's one thing. Like we we, uh, we do that. Like in, if we work on that every day in practice, like we're like uh, go 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 on a glass and get every offensive one. So that's something we work on in every practice. Yeah. Al. Okay. Uh, Alan Snow with OBSportsBiz.com. This is really for any of the athletes up there. Uh, what are your thoughts about having this rest regional in Las Vegas of all places? Yeah, um, you know, Las Vegas, it's a nice city, bright lights. So, um, you know, it's a it's a place that everyone wants to play at. So to play in, um, to play here is something special for us, and we don't get the opportunity to play in Vegas a lot. So um, I know as a team we're excited for it. We can't wait to get out here and play. And, um, you know, it's the bright lights, so we're all excited. A uh, question right down front here. For really anyone, but um, the the last two games you guys played, did you notice a difference in? You, did you notice that you had an advantage in the way that teams kind of prepared for you? That they're not really able to prepare for everything that you guys can throw at them. Yeah, kind of. I think uh, we just kind of just stick to what we do, and then going into the game, we also scout them. So just really sticking to our identity, like Alex said, and and really just trusting each other, playing for each other, and. I think it's it's hard for teams to be able to guard the three point line and also guard the dominant forces we have inside with Adama then Donovan coming off the bench. So we have a lot of different tools, a lot of different guys that can affect the game in different ways. So it's definitely hard to prepare for us. All right, we have a Zoom question from Christopher Heidel from Herb FM. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Herb FM Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on uh, making it out to Vegas. Uh, just talk about tomorrow night and what does it mean for you guys uh, making it to Sweet 16 and knowing that the program is uh, getting in the right direction? Uh, to, in, to anyone? Um, I think uh, just continue playing how we plan, um, playing tough, rebounding. We know they're a really, really physical team, matching their physicality, um, coming up right after break. And uh, I think we'll, I think we'll keep, keep winning if we do that. If I could ask a follow-up uh, real down quick. Down here. Uh, hey guys, Bob Holt again, Arkansas Democrat. Gets that. This is for Tristan, and maybe Jordan could take it. I wanted to ask you about Nick Smith for Arkansas, number three, really highly touted guy, a projected lottery pick, but he's been struggling the last couple games shooting wise. I was wondering, in preparing for Arkansas, the scout, what, what do you guys see from number three, Nick Smith? And he's such a good player. Do you think, wow, he might break out tomorrow because he's had a couple tough shooting games? Uh, nah, he's a he's a good player. We've scouted him a lot. Like, I mean, they have a lot of good players. They have a couple lottery picks on there, but so uh, I mean, we pride ourselves on defense. So whoever it is, we feel like we can go out there and shut them down and have uh, make sure they have an off night. So that's what we're gonna try to do tomorrow night. Uh, 
Jordan, would you mind taking that too? Um, he's a really good player, but he has to guard us too. Uh, Adam, yeah, right here in front. Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. I guess for Andre, you guys have fallen behind like midway through the first half. Each of the first two games have just overwhelmed opponents. Have you kind of felt something where you just kind of settle into a game and, and start to take over? Yeah, I think it's just uh, the beginning of the game, just getting through that first part where it's a little bit anxious, you know what I mean? But once we get past that and we all get lost into the game, that's when we're able to all break out and really express what we can do. Like, I think uh, tomorrow is definitely going to be a different type of game, a, a team that we like to play against, more fast-paced. Uh, athletic game, so it's definitely a game that I feel like we could definitely break out early and, and have uh, some more success in the first half as well. Okay, we have another Zoom, another question from Christopher Heidel. Hey, this question for Jordan. Um, you're from uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland. So what's it like uh, representing the state of Maryland in the, uh, in the Sweet 16? Um, I mean, it's amazing. Not a lot of guys coming from Gaithersburg get to get this opportunity, being very few. So uh, it was real nice putting on for for the state and the city, um, and uh, I'm excited for it. So, right here, Calhoun, Hartford Current, uh, Alex, what was it like to hear uh, from Coach Calhoun before you guys made this trip? You know, and have that have a guy like that who, you know, was part of the program's history. I um, mean, hear from him, and then the second part is just what was Coach Hurley's message coming out here? Yeah, uh, for your first part, I mean, it was special to hear from him. I mean, he's won three national championships. He's been, he's a UConn legend, and um, he was really the one that helped build this place up. So to get his experience, to get his insight on our team, and um, to tell us how how good of a team we can be is uh, something special to us, and we took it to heart. And then uh, Coach Hurley's message is kind of the same as last week, to enjoy everything uh, that we're capable of doing what we can do. And um you know, just to enjoy everything and, you know. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you, guys, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. We'll have Coach Hurley with us in about five minutes. Just to make a quick announcement, Hammond Communications.
Okay, we're joined in the interview room by UConn head coach Dan Hurley. Coach, welcome to Las Vegas and uh, open a comment about uh, the game tomorrow. Yeah, thrilled obviously to, to be here, excited to play in uh, you know, T-Mobile, fabulous arena. Um, obviously really exciting, you know, four, four programs here and um, you know, should be a unbelievable challenge versus uh, the Arkansas team that you know, was playing like the, you know, the top 10 team that they were projected to be in the preseason. Okay, question down front right here. Uh, you know, Dave Borges, first Connecticut media. Um, <laughs> Um, before we get into Arkansas, I just wanted to ask you about the, you know, the, cha the new changes in the Big East with Rick Pitino coming and Ed moving to Georgetown. What, what do you think that means for the league in general? I mean, for me, it means, you know, at least I, I get a bunch of months of rest before, you know, I got to deal with this, with this new, uh, the new and even more powerful conference. Uh, obviously, you, you know, you love, you love the, the hires, um, you know, you know what you know what, what Rick's going to do at, at St. John's. You know what you know Ed's going to do at Georgetown. Um, as I sit here, I'm not. I don't know who Providence has hired or is hiring because I just have. I'm not on Twitter right now. So, um, but yeah, the the league. It's great for the league. Um, you know, for me, I, I want the league to be as powerful as the league could be. As many quad one games as you can get across the board. As exciting as the league is, it's it's. Great St. John's and a great Georgetown is, is great for all of us. Question in the back, and then we'll go to the front. Uh, Jay Thomas, UNLV TV. So obviously the women's side of UConn also has a lot of success, and you guys are also have a lot of success being in the Sweet 16. So what is it like to represent UConn as a university? Yeah, it feels great. Obviously, um, from a basketball standpoint, you know, just, uh, you know, the history on both sides and um, – it's a special thing to play basketball and to share the practice facility, you know, together uh, with the history of both programs. Um, it, it's great for us to be holding up our end of the bargain in, in March now. We've put together some, I think, some pretty strong regular seasons, but it's, it's great to be joining them this late in the year, um, you know. But our, our programs, I think, uh, our players and my relationship with Gino and our coaching staffs does uh, – you know, th th there's a, a really uh, close relationship that we all have with each other that you know, I feel is like uh, is, is really galvanizing for both. Down front. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I wanted to ask you about Nick Smith for Arkansas. You know, very heralded players. You know, dealt with some injuries. Last couple games he hadn't shot very well. Um, but Eric says he thinks maybe he's due a breakout. What's your, ta what's your take on Nick? And are you concerned that, you know, he's not going to keep, you know, shooting like that? Yeah, he uh, – I mean, he's really a, a, an electrifying player to watch um, just in terms of, uh, you know, his abilities with the ball, just how, uh, you know, how, how, how twitchy he is with the ball, his, obviously his size, his length. Um, I saw him a bunch in, in high school. Um, so I, we, we know what he's capable of in terms of the three-point shooting and, and the perimeter shooting. So, yeah, I mean, we are obviously preparing for him like – We've got a guard, you know, one of the best, you know, scoring guards in the country. Hey, hey Dan, uh, Joe Ruta, Hartford Current. Um, how valuable is it to have, you know, Coach Calhoun to come in and speak with the team before you guys made the trip? And, and just second part, just how has your message, does your message change at all from the first two rounds to the team versus now? Yeah, for, I mean, first on Coach, um, I've always been smart enough to try to get as close to Coach Calhoun and, and Gino as I could possibly get. Uh, so much, you know, for me to learn from both. Uh, you know, and I just thought going into the tournament, you know, um, you know, I know what I wanted to be around Coach. You know, just get some of that magic on me a little bit. Um, you know, and then the, the second part, um, I just thought that, you know, a message, a confident message from Coach to the team about what he expected from them in Albany. Um, you know, I thought it landed. I thought the players were, um, that, that landed on them. And then, you know, obviously it worked. And, and uh, we want a coach to come back. Um, okay. And then this time of year, it's identity. And it's like just fellas play to our identity. You, you're dealing with nothing but quality here, um, especially in this little four-team bracket. I think anyone in this bracket's capable of, of 
of get, you know getting to the national championship game and winning it. So uh, we know how loaded this four team field is. We just got to play to our identity. Dan, Mike Anthony from Hearst. I don't know that I've ever seen a UConn player smile and laugh as much as Adama. Um, <laughs> Adama? Yeah. <laughs> it, he just seems to carry himself with, yeah. with a joy and like an appreciation for everything every day. Um, I'm wondering just, you know, what do you see in his personality that enables him to, to do that and the way he carries himself? Yeah, great family background. Uh, comes from, you know, great pedigree. And, and uh, I just think that, um, you know, he works so hard uh, at everything that he does. So I think innately he just feels like he's got a lot of confidence. Um, because he knows he's put in tremendous work. Um, he, and then he's had a, a, a heck of a career, right? I mean, he's, you know, he's getting to a Final Four. You know, he's, he's, he, you know, he's, he's advancing in this tournament further. Uh, if he does that, I mean, he'll talk about being one of the all-time great players in, in UConn history. He's, uh, he's at the doorsteps of that. So I just think he's, uh, he's grown and, and, and he's comfortable in his own skin. and. He, I think he, he only just believes in himself. Mark. Uh, Mark Anderson, AP. Um, Three-point shooting percentages are down across the board this year compared to previous years. Any explanation for that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's not – I think that there's a lot of fouling going on um, on the perimeter in particular. I think uh, talk so much about freedom of movement, and um, I, I just think there's like a little bit of physicality that's going on um, – you know, uh, um, you know, with with dribble drivers and and uh, you know and, and people trying to utilize screens on the perimeter that you know muddies and and, and mucks the game up. Uh, obviously, tomorrow's game for us it's important how how the game is officiated. Um, you know, because we do need the freedom of movement. You know, we uh, you know we, we run a lot of things offensively, and, and we need our players to be able to uh, to run without being 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 held, being grabbed in the back. Wayne Norman, UConn Radio. Dan, you're talking about perimeter defense. Could you say a couple words about the defense of Tristan Newton? He held St. Mary's leading score to three for 15 shooting the other night. And maybe how his defense has improved this year and how important he is to UConn's three-point defense that led the Big East. Yeah, you know, the, the one thing that really helps us because the, the, the tough thing going into the Arkansas game is, is their perimeter size. They, they obviously have, have huge guards. Um, and, you know, the, obviously a major plus with Tristan is he is 6'4", you know, close to 6'5". Um, and obviously that, uh, that was big in his matchup with Logan, uh, Logan Johnson. So um, he's going to need all of that versus this Arkansas team. I don't think that we'll be able to get away with as deep as the St. Mary's guards got with the ball against us in dribble penetration. Uh, Arkansas will finish those plays at the rim, so we're going to have to do a better job of keeping that Keep, uh, keeping their dribble drivers and they're constantly attacking. We're going to keep those guys out of the paint. Yeah, Dan, um, Dave Borges, Hearst Connected Media. Eric uh, really um, uses the transfer portal uh, quite a bit, more uh, as much as a lot of other coaches in the country. You've used it a little more effectively, but not quite as much. Is it kind of an interesting contrast in how to build a team between the two of you? Yeah, you know, um, they, they, they've had tremendous acquisitions, right, with the you got the three five-star, um, you know, uh, uh, NBA either lottery or first-round pick level level talents, uh, you know, in, in Smith and Black, and in Walsh, uh, yeah, and then and then they seem to be getting the you know some of the best portal players, um, you know, that, that are available. So, you know, I'm obviously very familiar with the Mitchell twins, with my Rhode Island history, and following their careers pretty closely. So. Yeah, we, you know, we, we probably go about things um, in a different way uh, in terms of like, you know, the way that we probably build a team. But I think our teams both kind of play in a similar way that we both play incredibly hard. Both coaches, you know, coach with a lot of passion. And um, so some similarities, some differences. Okay, we've got a question on Zoom from Christopher Heidel from Herb FM. Hi, Coach Hurley. This is Chris Seidel from Hurricane Radio in Baltimore. A uh, question about Jordan Hawkins, you know, kid from Maryland, you know, Gatesburg. What type of player is he, and, and how great is he on the on your team? Yeah, you know, he. Um, best thing about Jordan is is, is obviously his, his his skills and his talents and abilities. But his parents, you know, he's got great parents, and they, uh, 
you know, they've held him kind of accountable his whole life, and they really uh, allow us to coach him. They don't make excuses for him. Um, you know, they've just done a hell of a job raising their kid to, uh, um, you know, to to not make excuses or blame coaches or, or blame other people for their struggles. And uh, you add his type of NBA level talent uh, with that type of mindset that was instilled in parents, and now it's hard for me to screw it up. Adam? Coach, uh, Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. Each of the first two games, your team has kind of used that first 10 minutes to settle in a little bit and then just overwhelmed your opponent. What is it about your team kind of being comfortable in that and just knowing, like, all right, we're fine, we're fine, we can be a lot behind a little bit and just take over? Well, we were confident in the depth of the team. You know, we go nine, ten deep, uh, and our bench has helped us win a lot of games this year. I'd also, too, I think when you're UConn and you're playing in the first round of the tournament, maybe even the second round, uh, there's a lot of pressure on you, the pressure of the brand that you carry. And the, so I think we're maybe a little bit uptight going into, um, you know, those first and second round games. And hopefully, you know, some of that pressure has been alleviated and we could, you know, just go out tomorrow and let it rip. I don't think we could afford uh, uh, to, to have a slow start versus uh, these guys with the way that they play. Bob. Yeah, uh, Dan, Bob Holt again, our inside Democrat. I, I know you guys are one of the top rebound. I think you're the top rebound team left, plus 9-3. And I know you, I think you're the top offensive rebound team by Ken Palm Analytics. Arkansas is a plus 16 combined in Des Moines against two pretty good rebounding teams. So how do you see the rebounding, just the physicality and everything about this the matchup? Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be uh, obviously a, a part of this game is going to be played in a really physical way on the backboard. Um, you know, for us, I don't know that we have maybe quite the same level of athleticism. You know, so we've got to be more fundamental in terms of putting the body on a body. You know, being inside position um, and then being really physical at that point. But we, we, we pride ourselves on, uh, you know, winning the rebounding battle as they do. And, and uh, it's going to be a war when the ball goes up tomorrow in the glass, no doubt. Right, no problem. Uh, Dan, Don Mori from the Hartford Current, as you What's know. What's up? Yeah, I know. Uh, I know you. <laughs> Uh, can you uh, describe what's unique or special about Jordan's shooting mechanics? And also, if you see some similarities between his shooting ability and AZ Fudd's shooting ability, aside <laughs> from the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he has this unique ability, I think, to, to, to move at a speed uh, off of screens, like as a, uh, as a, using a stagger, using a pin, sprinting at full speed and getting into his shot just in a fluid, athletic, natural way that you're just not used to seeing at the college level. I think you're maybe used to seeing it a little bit more at the NBA level. I would not compare him to like a Clay Thompson, but a college version in terms of just how unique the skill set is. And, uh, um, you know, I think sometimes his first half, you know, he's got to remain a little bit patient um, because defenses wear down over the course of time. And that's where he's been able to expose some people in the second half, uh, you know, by getting on a, on a run and, yeah, I mean, I'll take uh, him shooting it as good as, as AZ shoots it in this tournament. It, it enhances my chances versus Arkansas. That could, she's unbelievable. One final question from John. Uh, John Marshall, AP. As a coach, how similar would you say you are to your dad? You know, that was a brutal last question, buddy. <laughs> you know, just the coaching part, you know. You know, I just I'm happy my dad's at the games. That's it, the clock went off. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay, we'll have Gonzaga head coach Mark Few in about 10 minutes.
Okay, we're joined in the interview room by Gonzaga head coach Mark Few. Coach, welcome to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, opening comment about the game tomorrow night. Uh, I mean, obviously, quick turnaround for us. Man, we got home at uh, like 3 a.m. Uh, Monday morning. So, uh, uh, but excited as heck, uh, you know, to have another week with the guys and be involved in another Sweet 16. And obviously, uh, uh, we've got a lot of experience playing here at T-Mobile even against UCLA, and uh, it's going to be a great environment uh, tomorrow night. And, and uh, we know we're in for a huge, huge uh, uh, challenge of just their experience and their toughness and their, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, kind of general will to win. Uh, but uh, looking forward to it. Steve. Hi, Marsh. Steve Kirk with the uh, Sporting Tribune. Fifteen years ago, the WCC of Mike Gilrin took a shot on Vegas by moving the tournament to New Orleans. How much credit should the WCC and Gonzaga, given its success, 12 wins in the 15 and three runner-ups, how much credit should you guys take for having this regional here in Las Vegas? I mean, we don't take any credit for it, but, I mean, we were, uh, back then, you remember this, we were pushing hard just for, a neutral side of any kind. We used to play our conference tournament at a predetermined site. I mean, half, most of the time it was never even at the number one. So when we first started our run, we had to go basically play a road game to qualify for this tournament. Um, and so I, I, th I give uh, you know Commissioner Gillerand and then uh, at the time uh, the leadership at Gonzaga, Mike Roth and 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 our president uh, for pushing that through, and it ended up being a brilliant move um you know and we've been here i don't know how long what is it 15 years you said and and then like i know you guys were here and felt this but like this year especially uh i mean it's the place to be now in uh, conference tournament week i mean there was just so much energy and you're just you're walking down the street and you know there's wcc teams there's pac-12 teams and fans there's WAC teams there's mountain west i mean it, it, it it's you know like a many little final four around here um, that week of the conference tournament. So it makes for a great, exciting uh, environment to bring your teams down to. Over here. Uh, Dennis Patchen with KHQ SWX. Mark, can you talk about the significance of eight straight Sweet 16s on what it means for your program and the university itself? I mean, I think it's, Dennis, it's one of the greatest, probably 1A and 1B, the Sweet 16 run and the uh, – uh, of eight years and then, uh, you know, making it 25 years straight uh, is probably the thing I'm most proud about, uh, what all our teams have been able to uh, accomplish. It means we've stayed relevant. Uh, you know, we haven't dropped off. We haven't, you know, taken a year in the NIT or a couple years in the NIT. We haven't lost the first round. Um, and uh, I, I just, again, the, the guys deserve all the credit for just maintaining that kind of winning DNA and just figuring it out. I mean, as you know, you followed us all year this year. It's, you know, this probably wasn't looking realistic there way back in November, early December. All right, right down front. Connor Morissette, Sports Illustrated Media Group. Coach, when you look at the teams in the Sweet 16, 11 different conferences are represented. What does that tell you about college basketball? And do you think basketball-wise, it's still as important as it used to be to be in a big conference? I mean, I think it just tells you there's a, a lot of really, really good teams out there. And I think with everything that's going on um, from really, really good players leaving early to, uh, you know, this COVID year stuff where it seems like 27 year olds are playing now, um, uh, it definitely, everything's kind of shrinking to the mean. But when you're out there playing these games, you definitely feel it and you feel how how close we all are, and I think that's what makes an accomplishment like these multiple eight in a row Sweet 16s even the more remarkable. Ed. Uh, Ed Green, your review journal. Hey, Mark. Uh, tomorrow's only the eighth time you've played them, but it just seems like with the dramatic endings, it's more than that. Do you can buy into the rivalry aspect against these guys? And also, can you believe tomorrow is 17 years to the day from Oakland? Uh, I mean, I, don't, I can't, can't even remember Oakland. I can't even barely remember last week or last year. Um, 
the interesting thing about this is, you know, uh, Mick and I worked really, really hard all off season a year ago to try to put that game together here. And it, I thought it, it ended up being a fabulous environment. And it, it was one versus two right after Jalen's shot, you know. And so <laughs> there's a familiarity uh, with our teams, obviously, back to the 21 Final Four. I mean, you have a lot of the, not a lot, but uh, Singleton, Hawkwes, and uh, Tiger were obviously in that game and, and, and played a lot, at least Hawkwes and, and Tiger did, and obviously Drew did for us. And then last year, you know, I mean, we still, we have many of the, watching the tape earlier this week, I mean, we had our young guards in in that game. We had, you know, Anton played a lot in that game. Obviously, Drew was huge. Um, so a lot of the same characters. So it's kind of the act three here within kind of a small time frame. Yeah. Dan. Yeah, hey, Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Mark, coming out of the Baylor uh, championship game in 2021, there might have been a perception about Drew that, hey, you could do this or do that to, you know, shut him down or get him off his game. What's, what's he done, you know, in the last couple years to, you know, sort of stand up to, to different challenges that, that people are throwing at him? I mean, first of all, that was – that would – I know that wasn't your take, but I would just say that's kind of an idiotic take that he – I mean, the dude's been posting numbers forever, and and they threw everything at the kitchen table at him that night and even fouled the living daylights out of him. And, um, you know, we just didn't move the ball good enough to make plays and all that. And then Baylor played great. Uh, but So I don't know why anyone would judge him just based on that. But he's been – remarkably consistent his entire career at just uh, he just delivers he delivers he delivers and I mean we this year our first 10 or 15 games we leaned on him as hard as we've ever leaned on anybody just I mean even against in guarantee games we were in trouble and had to throw him the ball 12 straight times to eke out a seven point win um, and so he's just a highly as as fun and and charismatic and goofy and everything as he is off the floor, he is an elite level competitor uh, when the ball goes up. And I think sometimes, you know, people focus on these great defenders out there and, and describe how tough they are. And I mean, I would argue you have to be every bit as tough and a little bit tougher to consistently deliver night in and night out when the opponent is trying to stop you with everything they got, double teams, their best defender, fouling, uh, anything. And he, he's just been able to rise to that occasion time and time again. I mean, he's – and if you look throughout his career, what he's accomplished, and, um, you know, one point at the start of our season, he was almost – had been ranked number one as a player. His team had been ranked number one more weeks than he hadn't been, which, I mean, that's just nuts. I mean, that's like – Bill Walton stuff or something, you know, and, and uh, I mean, I think he's going to go down as one of the greatest college players in the modern era here when we're finished. Hey, Mark, Travis Green, Crimson News in Spokane. Um, you kind of said how this is kind of like an act three of mm -hmm. this matchup. Um, when you look back at the last time you guys played here, you led by 20 at halftime. Yeah. Um, I know we've talked about it in the tournament here, kind of the slow starts. How, how important do you think it is to come out fast in this one? That was a very, very different game. I mean, you'd have to maybe ask Mick about that. I think that was back when uh, they were looking to play really, really fast maybe. And that was a high tempo, high possession uh, game. Um, and Andrew Nemhart was unbelievable. Uh, I, th I think since then they've probably got a little more possession oriented. And, and, uh, and again, they have the luxury now of kind of being the older uh, more experienced team. I think it, that this game will come down to you know, uh, us taking care of the ball. Uh, their defense is elite. And uh, us being able to make plays and, and find baskets against it. And then us on the flip side, you know, somehow, some way, kind of trying to keep Aquez and, and Tiger. And, and then now they're getting great play out of Bailey since he's came into the lineup, kind of doing our best to keep those guys in check. Anything else for Coach Few? Coach, thank you, and uh, good yep. luck tomorrow. Yeah, you got it.
We'll be joined shortly by three student athletes from Gonzaga. We'll have Malachi Smith, Anton Watson, and Rasir Bolton. Okay, we're joined here by our student athletes from Gonzaga. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We will bring the microphone to you. Down front. Uh, Travis Green, Grimpton News and Spokane. Uh, question for Malachi and Raj here. I know I've talked to you guys the past two weeks. It seems like every matchup is good guards. Uh, again here, this is happening. Maybe another level here. Just what's it like for you guys heading into this matchup, having to D up those guys? Um. I wouldn't say it's the same as TCU or Grand Canyon, but I think it's kind of the same concept of, you know, we got to do our job and get it done. Uh, they definitely got a great backcourt with Tiger and Amari Bailey. Uh, they play very hard and very smart. They all play together and they're, and they're trying to win. They're tough minded. So um, it's definitely going to be another tough matchup. But I think, uh, you know, coach is getting us right with the scout and we just got to go out there and execute it. Uh, I think just um, having the same confidence and mentality in our defense we've been having all year. Uh, you know, like Ross said, they're great players. But um, we got to just go out there and just play, you know, play harder and play team defense. OK, down front. At Sports Illustrated Media Group, for anyone who wants to take it, three-point shooting we see is down this tournament. Have you guys noticed anything different about the balls? Are they overinflated? Anything you can comment on with that? Uh, I mean, I think, for me, I think just for the whole landscape, like a lot of the balls that we're using, a lot of teams don't play with it. You know, like, I mean, a couple teams in our conference use it, but there would be games where like Tuesday we would play with one ball and then Thursday play with a different one. So I mean, coming to the tournament, some of these teams have never used it and having to prepare for two days with it like isn't a lot of time, but I don't know, maybe just the moment or something, I don't know. I'm gonna just go with what you said and blame it on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> right, in the back. Uh, uh, Brendan Quinn from The Athletic for, for Malachi. Um, Last year oh, at no. Chattanooga, yeah. Um, when, uh, you know, the way it ended this year, how many times have you kind of replayed that and, and, and maybe envisioned yourself getting another chance in a moment like that, you know, of late in the game and, and, and whatnot? I mean, you were there last year. You know, you talked to me. You saw how defeated I was. Um, I used that whole, that whole moment uh, for motivation in the off season. And, um, you know, you kind of have to just forget about it. It's in the past now. But um, coming in, like, just being able to have a different feeling and just um, going in there super confident and just uh, the fact we made it this far is, like, you know, um, it's been, you know, it's been a blessing for sure. Other, uh, Ed, right front. Ed Green, your review journal. Uh, you've played them before, so you know what it's like. Tomorrow will only be the eighth time the schools have met. Does that surprise you guys? Is there a rivalry there because of the games I'm sure you've heard about in the past and also the ones you've played them? Yeah, I would say um, there's been a rivalry kind of building up for the past couple of years, and it's, you know, every time we play them, it's a high-energy game. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of fans there from both sides, and, you know, they they really want to beat us and we want to beat them. So um, it's going to be a fun game. Um, we, we know what to expect. Uh, you know, they, they just, it's really just going to be competitive from the start. Right down front right here. Josh Green, Grim 2 News again. Uh, Anton and Raj, it's probably a good question for you guys. Uh, the last time you guys played was here um, a year ago. You guys were up by 20 at halftime. Um, with how these games have been going of late, do you think it's important to get off to a hot start? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, you never want to start off slow. Um, they're a good defensive team, so I think they're going to come out hot and um, try to pressure us. But um, last game against TCU, we had a slow start, and it was kind of harder to come back in the second half and um, build that build that lead. But 
yeah, I think getting a good start from the jump, uh, getting stops, and you know, seeing some shots go down is going to be good for us. Uh, I would say the same. Uh, I think a good start, you know, definitely helps out uh, as far as team morale and kind of just playing, playing from ahead, maybe. But uh, I don't think we expect to be up 20 uh, at half this game. You know, I'm sure it'll be nice, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a hard fought game. But definitely getting out to a good start will help. But I think it's all about the finishing these games. Yeah, Kevin Sweden from Sports Illustrated. This one for, for Malachi and Rajir. Uh, I'm curious, both of you have been at three schools now. What about Gonzaga makes it so different and so unique? Um, I would just say, like, the competitiveness amongst each other, but, like, still a family. I mean, like, in practice, like, having to guard him every day or guard Tan, like, that makes you better. You know, there's not a lot of players better than these guys. And um, just the mentality of winning, like, everybody wants to win at the highest level. And, you know, we're not satisfied with just winning 20 games or just making the tournament. And um, I think just from all the schools I've been at, like, winning's been the most important thing here. And everybody wants to win just as badly as the next. So I think that's what's made us so successful. Uh, I would say the same. Um, really just uh, I came here just for, like, the family feel. That's why I love it. I love, you know, being a part of this program, you know, what they've done years before me and kind of continuing on their legacy. Uh, and like he said, as far as practice and just the competition aspect, I mean, you know, I got to guard him and then guard Nolan, guard Julian and Hunter all day. So uh, I think just from that aspect, the talent and kind of what we have on the team, it makes everybody better and we're all competitive. But at the end of the day, we know we're all together and we're trying to win and achieve the same goal. Any other questions? Thank you, guys, and good luck tomorrow. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. We'll be back at 3.05 with the student athletes from UCLA. Just as a reminder, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub. That's www.ncaa.baritone.com. The transcripts will be provided by ASAP. They will be posted shortly. Thank you.
Okay, just a couple of announcements uh, for our media, our, our, our broadcast folks here. Today's satellite coordinates are Galaxy 17, Transponder 14, Slot B, Downlink 11975.5, Vertical. If you have any questions, please see the folks at Hammond Communications. A couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and your media affiliation. When asking a question, just raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you. If you're joining via Zoom, please use the raised hand function. We're going to take a number of questions from inside the room before we go to the Zoom. And you are not allowed to record these press conferences on your cell phone or on a camera. We will have the student athletes from UCLA coming in shortly. We'll be joined by Amari Bailey, Tiger Campbell, and Jaime Jaquez, Jr. Sit where you lay your name. Okay, we're joined by our student athletes from UCLA. Uh, questions for the student athletes, please raise your hand. We will bring a microphone to you. We'll start with Steve down front. Jaime, have you watched the tape from the last time you guys played Gonzaga here? Yeah, I've seen it. And we're ecstatic that we're here in the Sweet 16 and we're able to play against a great team. Uh, back here in the back. Scott Miller, New York Times. Um, for all, uh, Jaime and Tiger especially, um, referring to that question on that game, but not about the wins and losses, just what do you remember that game being like? What were the feelings like? as you were playing and looking back on it, aside from win or lose? Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, it's a new team. Uh, if you want to compare last year, the, I think it was maybe the third game of the year, um, and, and talk about almost two years, like maybe a year and a half, something later. We got a lot of new guys. This is a completely new team. Um, so you know, I think that game has little, um, little effect on uh, uh, what we're doing here in, the, in this game coming up. I mean, I may, you know, hit it right on the head. It's hard to compare a game, you know, from a year ago or even when we played them before that because um, we have a whole new team. They have a whole new team. Obviously, there's some, still some guys that were there just like we have. But, uh, you know, we're going into this game not worried about the past ones and just trying to get a win um, on Thursday. All right, we'll go to Thugney Wynn from the LA Times on Zoom. 
Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, this is Tiffany Nguyen with the LA Times. I have a question for you, Tiger. Coach Cronin is always talking about how hard it is to play defense with freshmen. You have one guy sitting next to you right now. But how has this team been able to do it with Amari and Adem and Dylan and Will contributing so much? And what kind of role do veterans have in helping bring, bring those guys along? Well, uh, it's good having freshmen that, you know, are here and that are willing to listen and that are, you know, willing to take on the task in front of them. You know, if you would have, um, you know, Amari being a great defender, for example, last game, uh, he played a player, a point guard that made second team all Big Ten and, you know, made it difficult for him all game and to even go back the game before. So when you have guys that are just ready and they're going against veterans every day in practice, um, it makes it a little easier when they get out there. But all that has to do with, you know, effort and, you know, them locking into the scouting report also. Because with young guys, it's hard. Um, they'll get backdoored. They'll get beat. You know, it'll be a lot of things that you don't expect. But, you know, the guys that we have, they've taken on uh, this defensive job very seriously because they know that, you know, that's the only way we're going to win is uh, by defense. And they recognize that. OK, here in the middle. Tarek Patel from Los Angeles Daily News. Hi, mate. It, you've been in so many of these tournaments now, Tiger yourself, but for Jaime, for you specifically, do you ever like have to pinch yourself a little bit, man? You've played in so many March Madness games, doing media all the time. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, it begins. Uh, it becomes surreal for 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 me, and I know I think Tiger and Amari can probably speak to that as well. I think it's it's hard, and me and Tiger talk a lot of after games about just trying to understand and realize the bigger picture and take ourselves out of our shoes and like look at what we've really done as a group together. Um, and, and we look back and we, we're, proud, we're proud of what we've accomplished so far. Obviously, there's, we're still here, we're still playing, um, and we got a lot more to do. But uh, when we look back, we're very proud of the effort and hard work that we put into building this program to what it is today. OK, down front. Jim Alexander from the uh, Orange County Register, Southern California News Group. Uh, Amari, along those same lines, this being your first exposure to March Madness, what are what are your impressions right now? What what's what's going through your head with not only what's going on on the floor, but all the media stuff and all the other stuff that goes with it? Um, really, just staying in the moment, um, staying present with my guys. Um, that's all I really can do. Uh, just like you said, this is my first experience with all of this, and um, I'm really just taking it one step at a time um, with the media, with uh, gameplay, um, practice play. So, yeah. Okay, let's go to the Zoom, to, back to Thukney Wynn of the LA Times. Hi, I had one for you. Obviously, your sister is going to be playing in her Sweet 16 uh, this weekend. Just what parts about her game do you appreciate the most and the kind of player she's grown into so far at UCLA? She's tough. She's, a, she, she's tough. I think uh, we play a very similar style of game. Um, I was very happy I got to watch her in the second round. I, I was able to go. I know all, all the guys were there supporting the women's team as well. Um, I'm, I'm just very proud of the work that she's put in. Um, you know, it's difficult as a freshman, but she's taking, she's taking her time there, and, and she's making the most of it. So I'm just very happy and proud of her. Okay, back here in the middle. Andrew Quinn, Krem2 in Spokane, Washington. Hi, May. Drew talked about you guys being roommates at a camp in high school. Yeah. Uh, just seeing uh, how far he's come, he's now the all-time scoring leader at Gonzaga. You've probably had battles with him over the years. Just how, how tough is he offensively, footwork-wise, and everything? And just seeing him grow all the way from high school, just what's that been like from afar? Uh, yeah, uh, we, like you said, we met each other. We were roommates at, a, I think, the Balls Live camp. Um, in, in SoCal, and when, it was great to just get to know him, get get to see how he how he was at the time. I mean, I don't think either of us knew how far our careers were going to go at that time. We were just kids enjoying basketball and having fun, and uh, you know, it's great to see him and all the success that he's had there. And you know, I, I credit that to all the hard work that he's put in. Um, and yeah, I'm just it, it was very cool to you know have full circle moments like that in life. I think 360 is a magic number. I think a lot of things come full circle, and I think here's another one of those instances. Right here in the middle. Thank you. Tiger, for you specifically, can you talk a little bit about Dylan Andrews? I think naturally his minutes have literally gone up, his points. He's made some key plays with the free throws and the three-pointer Northwestern. Just um, just your comments on Dylan Andrews and him being able to step up on such a big stage. Um, it might sound crazy, but, you know, I expect that from – and not just me, but the team expects that from him. You know, ever since he's first got here, he's been a dog. And – 
he's been willing to learn. And, um, you know, he's asked me all types of questions and he's trying to figure it out one game at a time. And, you know, I think that he just shows that he's ready when he comes in. Like, to your point, those big free throws that he hit, um, we don't win unless he hits those. So it's just, he's just a guy that stays ready. And, you know, when his time comes, it's, it's going to be crazy. Uh, he'll, he'll show everybody. Right down front. Connor Morissette, Sports Illustrated Media Group for Jaime and Tiger. What this year, only this year, stands out about Gonzaga on film to you guys? I think, uh, I think more than other offense, obviously, has been a big focal point of their team. Um, and I think that's just constant throughout uh, the three years that I've been here and been, been, been able to play them. Um, they're, they're always tough to guard um, in transition, the pick and roll as well. So um, we're just going to try to trust in our game plan, trust in the coaches, and uh, we're going to try to execute the best we can. Alan. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you, you want to follow up? Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. Oh. Right, go ahead, Alan. <laughs> Alan Snell with LBSportsBiz.com. This is up for all three guys. Um, how would you describe Las Vegas as a basketball town since you guys come here every year for the uh, tournament? And also you guys play here some uh, – Special one-off games too, you know, in the fall. Got this one. Yeah. That's for all three of you guys to so just oh, yeah, take good. turns. You want this one? I mean, I feel like we just want to. Um, <laughs> I feel like we want to come here and uh, win, obviously. But um, I mean, I feel like we've joked around about it a little bit, but just break the curse that we have here in Vegas and uh, just come out here on top. So. I think just to add on that too, I think uh, you know me and Amari obviously play high school, but ev ev everyone here um, I think has gone to Vegas at one point in their life for basketball. I think it really is an underrated mecca when it comes to youth basketball and just basketball in whole. I think it's a very underrated city. Tiger, you want to answer? Um, they pretty much answered on <laughs> all of them, so uh, I think I'm good. Other questions? Oh, Adam, right here in front. Adam Hill, Review Journal. Um, Tiger, I'll, I'll ask you. I know you've been asked about a couple of the younger guys. Uh, Will, in particular, you know, he's a Vegas kid coming back home. Uh, what is what is his journey kind of? Uh, uh, how has it been kind of perceived by you guys, and uh, what have you seen in his development? Uh, well, we know Will is a great player, and he's coming off uh, you know a pretty serious injury. So you know, me personally, going through something like that, I try to talk to him and you know, help him try to get more comfortable with his body and just tell him, you know, how much we need him and how there's no rush, but, you know, we need him to play if we want to win. So, uh, you know, he's a he's a gamer, so he stays ready. Um, we're just trying to, you know, keep up his confidence because uh, we see him do great things every day in practice, defensively and offensively. So uh, we're just trying to get him more comfortable in his body and just ready to come in these games and help us win because we know we're going to need him. Hey, right here in front. Uh, Kyle Kensington, this is for uh, flowhoops.com. Uh, Jaime, I talked to you before the season. You talked about coming back and how being on campus at the same time as your sister was pretty special. Getting to see her go to the Sweet 16, you were mentioning that. What's been the best part of being a big brother with your little sister on campus and kind of going through the journey together? Um, I think just being able to, you know, see firsthand her growth as, you know, a, a player, but also a, as a woman as well. Um, you know, this is just a big transition in everyone's lives when they go to college. And I think she's handling it great. Um, you know, obviously, they're in the Sweet 16. Um, but I think just more than that, she's learning how to live you know, by herself, on her own, and kind of finding her own way in life. And I think that's just really cool as an older brother just to see um, my little sister grow up in front of my eyes. OK, right here. One more question, Jaime, along that line. Uh, are your parents going to be flying back and forth this weekend between here and, and Greenville, or what's what's the deal there? Um, I, I don't have their flight itinerary, but I know they um, I know they're crazy, and they're going to try to make both as best they can. Um, uh, my parents are very supportive, and they've been that way since I was a, I was a kid, and uh, I just really appreciate all the hard work that they put in trying to make it and support you know all three of their kids um, and all their uh, I guess sports and, and, and all their games. Back here in the back. Uh, Amari, coming in as a freshman, uh, your last five games averaging 17 points per game, obviously not phased at all by the bright lights of March and the Pac-12 tournament and everything. Just what about this time of year is bringing out the best in you right now, especially heading into a matchup with a team as prolific offensively as Gonzaga? I'm really just trying to um, 
uh, stay sane and trust in my work, um, trust in um, what we built together collectively as a group, um, not really getting beside myself, knowing that we're going to have to come in and compete for 40 minutes, um, really just letting everything uh, play out and whatever happens, happens. Um, and just staying present in the moment, really. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you guys very much. Good luck tomorrow night. Thanks, guys. Just a reminder when you're asking a question to identify yourself for our transcripts, please. Thank you. Yep, we're ready. Okay, now we're joined by UCLA head coach Mick Cronin. Coach, welcome to Las Vegas. Uh, opening comment about tomorrow night's team against Gonzaga. It's great to be back in Vegas. Always good to be in Vegas. Um, I think I might, uh, obviously, uh, we're happy to be here. It's not easy to get here. Um, there's only 16 of us left, so uh, we take, uh, take the opportunity um, very seriously. So we're not here for vacation. Everything we work for is hopefully to, to win four more games. So got to find a way to win tomorrow night. I have great respect for our opponent. Obviously, we played him the last couple of years. Everybody knows about the Final Four game. Um, so I have great respect for them. All right, Dan. Yeah, Dan Wolken, USA Today. Mick, the way college basketball is now, it's pretty rare to have multiple players from a Final Four game two years ago that are still, you know, in college and, and playing in this one. How, how do you think that plays with your guys just in terms of, you know, understanding what they're, what they're up against uh, tomorrow? Oh, they, I don't – I think they definitely do understand, um, which would be, I agree, rare, right, this day and age in college basketball. But, you know, just like Watson and Timmy understand, you know, so they, they got the same kind of guys. Uh, which is why both teams probably have I don't know their I don't know their record but I'm sure they got over 30 wins so or I know we got 31 so you, there's a reason that we got a lot of wins over 60 combined probably between us so um, yeah I think it makes it, it, it is I'm sure people in this room like yourself Dan um, wish it was more like that you know we're all getting older and we, you know, think about how we, you know, college basketball was great when Leitner and Hurley played together for a long time. Uh, you know, I know I'd like to coach uh, Kareem and Bill for six years, three and three. <laughs> On the side here. <laughs> It'd be really nice. Uh, ben hey, Ben. Ball, hey, uh, Ben Balch, Los Angeles Times. Um, before the season, somebody asked you if this could be your best defensive team at UCLA, and you kind of chuckled and said no too many freshmen. Yeah. But it's funny how it played out, right? Yeah. And the, looking at those freshmen, it's like now you'd almost want more of those guys because yeah. they've been so good. What's gone into making this your best defensive team with guys like Adem, Amari, Will, Dylan making such big defensive contributions? Well, uh, we're, you said this actually to me early. You says, I remember you said this is the most athletic team you've had. Um, and I learned from Coach Huggins 20 years ago or more than that now, um, 23 years ago since I worked for him. You gotta be able to erase mistakes. Great defense, you can't just be good uh, 
all you're not always going to be perfect. So defense, the great the great teams can erase mistakes, and you do that with athletic. It, the better athletes you have, you can you have a much better chance to erase a mistake. Um, so you know, there's times where there might be a guy open, but Amari Bailey's such a great athlete that he deflects the pass, uh, or Dembona changes the shot, Kenneth Nuba blocks the shot, um, you know, and then to combine that with the seniors that we have, you know, back to the experience that they're they're in the right place 99% of the time. But your freshmen are so athletic that they can make up for uh, their their. Their athleticism supersedes their inexperience at times, and their toughness. You know, as you know, I'm a big believer in that. Um, so the guys, you know, the two that have started us for started for us all year, unbelievably tough, athletic kids. Amar, you know, Amari Bailey's an unbelievably tough, athletic kid, and so is a Dembona. Now, you know, we're we've been able to keep it going without um, the best perimeter defender I've ever coached and the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, Jalen Clark. So. You know, we just had the makings of that uh, of that team. You know, of a team that could be great defensively. Steve, I know uh, Steve Carp with the. Good to uh, see you, man. Hi, good to see you uh, with the Sporting Tribune. You've been around the game a long time. You remember when Las Vegas was not seen in a, a good uh, oh, yeah. by the NCAA. I read that article in a good light. <laughs> you are here playing in an NCAA regional. How's that wash with you? as a guy who comes here every year with his team and has had no problems in terms of long time, dealing with Vegas? Lo long overdue. Long overdue. Um, so I'll just try to be pointed. You know, you guys know me, I'm always honest. Long overdue, great city, uh, probably the best city in our country to host an event. The Final Four it was just a matter of time once Allegiant was built. But we all know why, you know, that the NFL, once the NFL came here, it was going to open it up for everything else. I mean, that's just the facts. And then, you know, once state legislators started passing and allowing FanDuel and DraftKings and all that stuff, then it was okay. Somebody's always got to be make a move first. And the NFL made the move here first to Vegas. I think that probably opened it up. Obviously, you need the arena. But Thomas and Mack is an unbelievable building. Could have hosted a lot of tournaments. Is I'm sure you're, that's what you're thinking. So just happy for the city. Well deserved. Long, long overdue. Mark, uh, Mick, uh, Mark Anderson, AP. Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, three point shooting percentages down this year compared to previous tournaments. Any explanation for that? Uh, you'd have to give me the numbers. Like 31 something percent. It's generally been over 32. So we're talking about one percent. Yeah. If we're not talking about my portfolio, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you serious? We're talking about one percent. Wow. Been consistently over 32. This is probably a little bit of a dip. Well, we got rid of the teams that can't shoot. Now let's play. <laughs> okay, in the back. Sam Gordon, Las Vegas Review Journal. Mick, um, Will's playing a lot of big games here in Las Vegas. None, yeah. bigger, none bigger than the one tomorrow. Um, how would you kind of contextualize his journey? through the program to the point when you met him in recruiting to, you know, going through the injury, the adversity, and where he is now? Yeah, well, Grant Rice is a good friend of mine. Somebody, you know, he could easily could be a college coach, but he's smart enough to have a normal life and a great family. Brooke probably wouldn't let him do it, uh, even if he wanted to. Um, but he told me right away, I, you know, I, I called him when I got the job, you know, who, who should I recruit on your team? And he made, you know, he said that, you know, Will McClendon, he's, he's good enough and he's a UCLA kid. Um, you know, Grant obviously is from Southern California, so he knows he knows the tradition, the history, and what our academics are about. Um, so, and he was right on all accounts. You know, Will just had a traumatic, traumatic ACL injury. It scared. I mean, it was scary. He was in pain. Tough recovery, um, but he's back to normal now. Uh, and right now, look, he, in this team, he's just playing a role for us. Um, he's trying to be Jalen Clark while Jalen Clark's out. Um, I know Will, as you know, is a big shot maker at Gorman. He was known as Big Shot Will. So, um, and I still know he's got it in him. You know, we, we, we work with him every day on it, just trying to keep his confidence up. Obviously, he, he, you know, his numbers show people. You, if you didn't know him, you'd think, well, he, he's not a shooter. But if you watch high school basketball in Las Vegas, you know that that's what he was. Um, but he's just a winner. 
and I believe in winners, you know, so that, you know, Grant knows me. He knows what I'm looking for. He's, this kid's a winner. He's your type of guy. And guys help you win a lot of ways. So right now in his career, he's helping us win with intangibles and toughness and defense. But I know the day's coming. He's going to help us win with shots, too. In the very back. Uh, Dennis Patchen with KHQ SWX. Gonzaga played here a year ago against you. You played three games here in this building two weeks ago. The fact that you both are familiar with this facility, is that going to make for a better game, do you think, tomorrow? Because the newness is not here? Uh, again, I, I, maybe. I think that's media stuff. Yeah, I think that's media stuff. Like, I, I, I don't know about all that stuff. I, I think, you know, um, I don't care where the game is, what ball you're using, players play. I mean, I never heard Michael Jordan. I grew up in the Michael Jordan era when I was young. He was the best player ever. You know, Kareem was older when I, I, I was, you know, I, he, a little bit. So, you know, guy, guys, I just never heard of guys like that talk about stuff like that. You know, I was raised on the great Oscar Robertson. You know, my dad talking about him all the time. I never heard them guys talking about the gym and, you know, the ball. And I, I just, I don't believe in that stuff. To me, it's all soft. That's just how I look at it. I mean, them guys back then, man, they got on, they drank, they drank beer, whatever, you were interviewing them, got on a commercial flight, and Larry Bird got 50 the next night. So, <laughs> and I don't know, you know, what the hell kind of ball they were using or what gym they were even in. All right, right down front. Connor Morissette, Sports Illustrated Media Group. Coach, what makes Gonzaga such a difficult team to play against? They have three things. Coaching, plus plus. Drew Timmy, and shooting. <laughs> How's that for you? And, and not just shooting from one guy. They have multiple shooters, a great, great go-to player that, that has over 100 assists, very rare for a big guy. Um, and triple A coaching. Coach, this is probably media stuff too, oh. but uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. Um, tomorrow's the 17 year anniversary of the UCLA Gonzaga game, where UCLA had the comeback. Obviously, you guys have the the recent games. Now you them. know, 17 years ago, I wasn't at UCLA. So who, was that? Who was in that game? Those are the uh, the Adam Morrison on the court. UCLA had the big comeback in that game. I, I'm not asking about that game in particular. Okay. I'm just saying the, the rivalry has developed over this time. You guys have played the last two years. Um, two of the premier programs, obviously, on the West Coast, probably the two premier programs. I guess what makes this rivalry kind of special right now? And um, is, that, is that a good thing for the sport of college basketball? Oh, look, all, all, all that stuff's good for college basketball. Yeah. Um, you know, playing big games, that's why Coach Few and I decided to try to get that game going last year. You know, it's good, good for our you know, we, we played terrible, but they, that give them th because of them. But, um, you know, it's, it's all good for college basketball, absolutely. Anything that gen generates interest uh, is good for college basketball. So I think, you know, as a coach, you've got to be willing to schedule those kind of games. Dan? You know. Yeah, Dan Wolf from USA Today again. Uh, Mick, I'm curious, how do you address it or approach it with your team when you lose a player – important to you like Jalen Clark late in the season and your guys are smart they understand what it means but it doesn't seem like you know from a mental standpoint that it's it's rattled them at all um we you, you, it's because of the way we operate all all year you know that that our other guys you you got a scholarship for a re, for a reason and we operate under that it, it's uh, it's never okay to lose so it doesn't matter who's playing now, it may be a little bit harder to win. We might have to make some adjustments. But we're going to tell you how to win, and we got to be tough enough to figure it out. I mean, that's just what it boils down to. Um, you know, you got to be tough enough to do whatever you got to do to win the game. So, um, you know, if it's somehow we got to find a way to contain Drew Timmy and not give up a million threes tomorrow, regardless of who's playing for us. Because we got some guys day to day. So. Doesn't, but, you know, if it doesn't go our way, I'm not going to come in here and say, you know, we lost because these two guys weren't playing or these three guys weren't playing. You know, it's, we're still going to get to play five on five. You got to be tough enough to figure it out if you want to win. Right here in the middle. Tark Patel from the Los Angeles Daily News. Hey, Coach. Um, specifically, Dylan Andrews, everything about him has elevated. You mentioned he was It's all coaching, 10. man. Look who he plays <laughs> for. The, his, his ability to evolve – 
and help the team on such a big stage in more minutes and more shots? Can you just talk about that? Yeah, he was plus 10 the other day against Northwestern. His defense, you saw, if anybody you're like, you really watched that Northwestern game, how good he is defensively on the ball. So, and it's a look, a comfort zone offensively is really hard for a young player um, if they don't get extended, you know, for any player, if you don't get extended minutes. Um, it's just hard to get in any type of rhythm offensively. But again, another, you know, he's young, he's playing on a team with some great talent, and he's embraced his role, which is, again, there's a reason why you have a bunch of wins. It's not, not the four letters, it's not the coaching. You know, the guys, the guys buying into what they need to do to be a 31-win team, and he's a great example of it. You know, he's a, you could look at his numbers and say, well, he hasn't had a great freshman year, and I couldn't disagree with you more. Like, in what we needed him to be this year, he's done a great job of it. All right, final question from Chris in the back. I apologize on the Zoom, but we only have one minute left on our satellite. So, Chris, go ahead. Oh, uh, Coach Chris Matthews, KLAS TV here in Vegas. Can you quickly, I'm, not, I'm sure you mentioned this before, you talked about what's good for college basketball. Yeah. What about the, the transfer portal, the NIL, kind of that wild, wild west, and, <laughs> and, your, and your thoughts on that and how, it, how it's kind of changing the game of college basketball? Yeah, I think it's just, it's just different. It's, you know, you got to look at it as different. You know, the, the dying words of every successful business is somebody sitting there saying, well, this is how we've always done things. And I would remind that to the new head of the NCAA. They better heed those words if they want the NCAA to, to exist and continue. They better heed those words. So I'm glad you asked that question. Because players getting paid is coming. You know, the, the, the government in our country to, had got to a point where they're interceding to force NIL. And the next thing is going to be the Alston case, Supreme Court. I mean, it's just a matter of time. And we better figure it out if we want to continue. Got to, and, and lobbying to stop it or hoping it's the ships coming back to port is not the answer. We, we have to figure it out. Coach, thank you. All right, guys. Good luck tomorrow night. Just a quick announcement, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. The transcripts will be provided by ASAP. They will be posted shortly. Thank you very much. We will see you tomorrow.